I'm very, very excited about something. The final patch of Classic WoW has been announced. And it's gonna be in tomorrow. This is gonna be the patch that the Classic Era servers will be on. I'm assuming that there's not gonna be a whole lot different or a whole lot changed after this point. I think from here on, there's probably not gonna be a whole lot that's different. That'd be my assumption. I think they're gonna make, and I hope they do, make a few fixes and changes to Classic for people who wanna play Classic forever after the fact. But before we go on with the rest of the stream today, I, I think it's important that I talk about this. I would like to talk about this. I think it's uh, it's something that I'm very excited about because a lot of these, there's a number of these things specifically that are put in, the individual things that I personally have like pushed for and to see that they're actually doing it, I'm incredibly, incredibly happy about. I, it makes me so happy to see that. So let's just get into it. Let's go over the patch notes and then we're gonna go do some cornwood, okay? Players who complete Chromie's quests in Anderhal can obtain an ancient artifact of bronze dragon flight magic. What that is is the Chrono Boon Displacer. What is the Chrono Boon Displacer? You can use it to store any world buffs, such as Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer, War Chief's Blessing, and Spirit of Zandalar for later use. I'm assuming this also includes Songflower, Darkmoon Fair, whatever. You click the supercharged Chrono Boon Displacer to restore your buffs with their previous remaining durations intact. And you may not benefit from additional world buffs until you have restored any that you currently have stored in the supercharged Chrono Boon Displacer. This does two things. One, that's this is one solution that fixes two problems. It fixes the problem of, hey, like I gotta log off with all my world buffs. That's for one. It's, hey, like I got my world buffs at like Tuesday, Thursday at 4 a.m., whatever, and then I, then I log off until for the whole week until I can raid. It fixes that problem. One, it also fixes the problem of, I'm constantly running around like a chicken with my head cut off, freaking out trying to go from place to place and, and getting dispelled. It's not 100% perfect, but I think it is a damn good solution. And I'm personally very, very happy that they finally are doing something about it. I thought this would be a, a more aggressive solution. I'm surprised they went with something so aggressive to, to completely add something new to the game. But you gotta account for the times. This is stuff that I've been talking about since before Classic came out. And I'm, and I'm really glad that at least they did it. Am I, am I happy about when they did it? No, absolutely not. But. It's, it's getting towards the Twilight of Classic. I think we are gonna have another month of this patch or so before the pre-patch is in. I think the pre-patch will probably come in just like everybody else has been following this, probably around the end of May. Uh, people data mine some dates for like pre-patch character or whatever, like being able to go to the Classic Vanilla Forever servers, uh, which will be on this patch. So people think May 18th, end of May, whatever, maybe even beginning of June. I, I think that's probably the most real realistic thing. The next thing, uh, gameplay adjustments. And this is something that I had a personal conversation with. Beneficial buff priority system. You guys have watched my streams. You guys have seen it happen. I, I've, I've been very vocal about it is so dumb just from a game design standpoint to even make it to where you can go and get these awesome world buffs and then somebody hits me with a renew or you know an inspiration procs or whatever or like for a shaman well, yes, armor buff priest armor buff, whatever it is. And then all of a sudden I lose my world buffs that I spent however long getting before raid. So what does this do? This actually closes or, or hurts uh, the, it does two things. One, it makes it so different classes can't really like spec into certain things because you're like, oh, I, I shouldn't spec into this because it's gonna ruin my buffs for for my, my raid members, whatever. The second thing is it's kind of easy to like, not easy, but it's like possible to like grief somebody's world buffs off. Who cares what world buffs we've gone for TBC? Well, this is gonna be for the end of Classic WoW. And honestly, even though I'm not personally going to be playing vanilla forever, or at least that often, I'll have my character there and I'll do whatever. Mm. There's gonna be a number of people that do wanna play on the Classic Era vanilla forever servers. And I'm happy about this change because there's a lot of people that are gonna to wanna to do that. So I'm very, very, very happy about the beneficial buff priority system. This is as big of a change. Honestly, this is as big of a change as, as this. It is so huge. So now your world buffs won't fall off in a raid because, oh, I can't have this, I can't have that buff because they'll give top priority to the world buffs. Very cool, very exciting. This should help prevent situations where limited duration or low impact buffs, such as renew, rejuvenation, or six piece set bonuses would push off important buffs, six piece like the Paladin tier. Important buffs such as Rallying Cry or Flask or whatever. Outstanding, outstanding change. I'm personally, I'm, I'm, this is something that I personally have been pushing for. I'm so happy about it. Awesome. In addition to that, 
Uh, Mark of the Champion, Rune of the Dawn, Seal of the Dawn's benefits are now passive auras and no longer count towards the buff cap. Great. This isn't something that I, I had, you know, any any feedback on, but I, I agree with, very much agree with, but I, I didn't I didn't really have any direct feedback or anything with that, and that's a good change, awesome change. Spell bashing removed. This has been the big meme, right? Everybody is from the beginning to the end of classic, before classic, after classic. Everybody talks about spell bashing. It's a 400 millisecond latency buffer, and they're taking that 400 millisecond latency buffer down to 10 milliseconds. This is going to change some things with gameplay. Uh, some paladin stuff specifically is going to be changing. Like my class is going to feel different, and I'm glad that you know, given that they're going to do this for Burning Crusade, they're putting it in now, at least so you can kind of learn how to replay your class without batching. Uh, I, I think 10 milliseconds is too low, and I think that the the problem isn't really batching itself. I've I've gone into this a lot, and I don't want to touch on it too much. The problem is how the batch was implemented into Classic WoW, which is not how it was in, in original Vanilla, where they basically put a flat like 400 milliseconds on everything, which is dumb. Uh, they put everything on the batch. Certain things are gonna get fixed by this. Certain things are going to be better. Some things will be a little bit worse. Uh, this is a, for, for some Paladin things are getting nerfed. So speaking to myself personally, uh, but they're, they're making some changes in order to go through and uh, make it to where like you can still seal twist and you can still do some of this other stuff. So, uh, Paladin Seals will now persist on a Paladin for a very short time after they're replaced by different seals so that seal twisting remains possible. The big question right now, is this going to be available for all seals and to be able to go both ways? That's how it's been for the entirety of Classic. That's how people Wee. feel like it should be. We feel like it should be that way. Uh, a lot of Paladin players. So hopefully that is going to be the case and hopefully if it's not the case, they still consider doing that because on Wee. the TBC beta, it's not like that. Like you can go from seal of blood or seal of command to seal of blood, but you can't go from seal of blood to seal of command. You can go from seal of command to justice, but you can't go justice to command. One thing specifically that's gonna get nerfed that was a big thing that I would do personally, Palins don't have an interrupt, but you can cast judgment of command and there is a small delay. This is a good example of everything being on the batch and it shouldn't be. Judgment intentionally was designed originally with a delay on it. I talked to Kevin Jordan about this and he said, Judgment had about half a second delay. Judgment is supposed to have a half a second delay on it. It does not have a half a second delay on it anymore because they just threw it on the batch. What this half a second delay did was it gave you time, or the 0.4 second delay with the 400 millisecond batch, it gave you time to cast Judgment of Command and then cast Seal of Justice on yourself. So that Judgment of Command would have a chance to proc Seal of Justice, which would give you a two second stun. This two second stun is a random proc stun, which is on a separate diminishing return timer than Hammer of Justice. So whenever you go two plus six, you could get like an eight second stun lock on somebody. You want to throw a repentance in there, that's even longer. The intent of removing spell batching. This should cause most player abilities to behave more responsively. Damage and healing applied to targets faster. Certain operations in the game now resolve faster, such as purchasing multiple quantities of items from vendors rapidly. Again, they put the entire game on the batch, which is stupid. Now what they did do, and, and I am very thankful that Blizzard did this at least, and they've started it as again, they, they they did a manual change to be able to allow for seal twisting to still be possible because that is a big part of paladin gameplay and it's not something that's inherent to the it's inherent to the paladin class but it's not like listed out for you anywhere right so a lot of people that don't really know about it whenever they're starting to play paladin or whatever but it's a big part of the class it's just because it's it just adds another layer of gameplay uh next there's now no area of the race platform in Higgins room uh that is a safe space from Higgins mana burn this is obviously this is a, this is a reasonable change it's, an, it's like an exploit, just fix it, right? Uh, fix other areas in the Hygen room where plague waves could overlap and deal double damage. Ooh, okay, that's bad. Uh, but that's good that they fixed it. As far as item fixes go, made several fixes and improvements to the combat behavior of Guardians summoned from items such as Vanquish, Tentacle of Cthulhu, Defender of the Timbermont, Arcanite Draggling, to make them more likely to engage in combat in a wider variety of situations. It, this is like just an annoying bug. How many times have you popped an Arcanite Dragonling or whatever and it just sits there and doesn't attack? So this is good. It fixes it. Uh, Shadow Oil and Frost Oil can now proc while the player's on the global cooldown. This is something that a lot of people found out about, myself included, uh, after Classic came out. Some things are not able to proc whenever you're on the global cooldown. This is really stupid, and they got rid of it for a lot of items eventually. That's why Hand of Rag ended up not being so good for a while. They eventually removed it, but at that point it was like, hey, there's, there's other items that are better. Example of why Thunder Fury is so good is it's, it's not on that uh, global cooldown 
proc timer or whatever. Overall, very happy about this patch. I wish they would have done a few more things, but I think this is a very nice cleanup patch for the end of Classic WoW for Vanilla Forever servers. I hope, I hope, I hope, and I wanna talk about this a little more in the future, but I hope that they don't just throw it away. I hope that they don't just throw it away and they pack it up, set it aside, and they say, here it is. Because I do think that there is going to be emergent gameplay to Classic WoW. I think there is going to be things about Classic WoW that people are uh, gonna wanna see be different and see some things fixed and cleaned up. I think people playing on these classic era of Vanilla Forever servers, I hope that they don't really just like get neglected. You know what I mean? Let's make a YouTube video out of this. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for joining me. If you're new to my YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe. I do all kinds of stuff on my YouTube channel. Uh, I do all kinds of stuff on my stream. So you'll see stuff from GTA RP, IRL streams, variety stuff to WoW, Classic WoW. Obviously I'm very excited about Classic WoW. I'm a Classic WoW guy. A lot of people have known me for Classic WoW. Chat, say hi YouTube, say hello to everybody on YouTube. I hope you guys join me soon. Thanks. Bye bye. McConnell, I'm in Discord. McConnell's asking if I want to join Discord. I'm in Discord. Yeah, but you weren't. I know, I lied to make you look bad. So, what a dickhead. I know. <laughs>